Welcome to Speedy Walkthroughs, where we show just the important stuff to beating the game. For those watching for the first time, this will look different to a normal walkthrough. It's designed to show just the essentials so that you don't need to spend a long time watching this video. I won't talk about fighting specific enemies unless they're very difficult, but I will show you where to go and what to do. Today we're playing Animaniacs for the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. So this is a bit different to the SNES version that was released, and it plays a bit like a puzzle game. You'll have three different characters with different abilities, and we'll see how that comes into play a bit later. Let's make a start. So first things first, I'm going to set the difficulty to hard mode. The only thing that really changes is the number of lives that you get, but I'm just demonstrating that it can be done. From there, you can choose what controls you want, and I'll go through the controls shortly. And we're just going to start the game and make it past the intro cutscene. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is controls. So I'll display the controls on screen just now. It's fairly straightforward, the d-pad moves you around and then you can jump and do your action as well as use the C button to change characters. So the whole premise of this game is that you have three characters and each character will have a different ability. We'll just jump over the edge and I'll show you what that looks like. So you've got your B button to jump and you can attack with the A button. So we have three characters, Yakko, or Wacko, and Dot. Yakko has this little ping pong bat thing, Wacko has the hammer, and Dot has the kiss. And so each character has abilities beyond this, so Yakko can push blocks like this. And the ping pong bat is good for enemies, but it doesn't have too many uses outside of that. Wacko's hammer is the main ability, and that can hammer important things like bombs, for example, as we see here. And then Dot's kiss can confuse enemies. So this dog at the end of the level could be confused by the kiss, and then that lets us get past, you just have to get it at the right height. And that's essentially the training level done, which also teaches us how the controls work in this game. Okay, so after the training level, we're brought out onto this main screen and you get to choose between four levels. It really doesn't matter what order you do them in, so we're just going to take them one through to four. First level is based off of Western movies, and we'll make a start on this. So I will be speeding up most of the action here, and I'm going to show you the main puzzle solving parts. There's a little intro cutscene to this level. You can skip it, uh, it just kind of explains what they're trying to do in the story here. Okay, so first things first, push the block to the side. Uh, you want to confuse the bird with the kiss, jump across the gap. Uh, then we want uh, Wacko to hammer the cannon. We're going to be blown up through there. Next we'll keep going. We're going to confuse this dude. He will go straight to the middle. We can jump on his head to make it across. Okay, now we'll need a slot to Wacko here. He can hit the hammer up and down. Uh, you want to go under the lights by hitting the hammer to put it down and then hit the hammer again to bring it up. That brings us past this part. Now we've got the rowboat section, so we're going to go all the way through. We will want to be wacko eventually because there's this elephant here. The way to get past this is to hammer it down. And we're going further through. So ping pong bat is very good here. You can hit the cop dude. And then we're going to fall down this area. There's basically a switch right at the bottom here, so we're going to fall all the way down. Wacko will hammer it, and then we just got to climb back up on the logs. And that brings us to the next area. Now Wacko is important here again. We can hit the up arrows or the down arrows. So if you hit the down arrows, all the paths will change to down. Same as if you hit the up arrows, they'll change to up. So you've just got to make sure that you don't uh, get hit by anything here. Up is usually pretty safe to have it on. Although when they're down, you run the risk of falling off the track. So if you're in doubt, just keep it up and you'll probably be fine. And then that's all you really need to do in this section. I will note here, if you get 100 stars, you'll uh, be able to get an extra life, so that's something to keep in mind if you're having trouble. Wacko will hammer this, and you'll get uh, thrown up in the air. And then same thing happens here. And once again. Alright, next area, we've got to stay kind of up as much as we can. We'll dodge these snakes and make it up to this section. There's little invisible platforms across here that we can run across. And then we've got to pull out this box. So you can pull out the box by hitting your attack button and pulling. And then Wacko will hammer these down. And then we jump up on there. Moving on. So this water brings us up. 
And then we got a little puzzle here. We just got to hit the switch and that opens the door. Okay, now we're in our first boss fight. So the premise of this boss fight is we want to hit the boulders up to hit him and then he'll come running down and then we need a ping pong bat him. So we're going to hit the boulders up as much as we can. We'll be able to hit him a few times before he comes back down. Now, the, the mice are coming out here, Pinky and Brain. When they come out, that means that he's about to come down. So we swap to Yakko. And then we ping pong him. And then we're all done. So it can take you quite a few cycles of him coming down. But if you're quick enough with the hits of the boulders, uh, you'll be able to get him just there. Alright, so moving on, we're going to do level 2. This is the space-themed level, very heavily inspired by Star Wars. First thing we have to do is talk to Wacko, hit the switch. We ride this little ship to the right, and you pretty much just go to the right. So this is the first time we'll see a double box puzzle. Uh, the physics behave as you might expect. You pull out the box and the other one will fall down. All we need to do is jump across this gap. We confuse the bird here to bring the little plane thing across, and then we're going to ride this up. Just try and dodge all these falling things as you go. So whack, uh, you step on the switches to open the doors, and here we can pull the box down onto this switch. If you just try and step on the switch, the door will close too quickly. So that's a way to keep the doors open. And then we'll make it down. A little shortcut here, you can ride this box down and then jump to the right. It saves a little bit of time compared to going around. All right. Now this bit's really tricky to avoid damage. If you just hold right, you will take some damage, but you do make it through. All right. Now in this little bit, we're going to have a mini boss fight with the policeman. All we have to do is really keep ping pong paddling him and then we're fine. And he'll get hit by a little comet thing and then we can move ahead. All right. Now this puzzle can be quite tricky, uh, you can jump across just by pushing the boxes enough to the right, same sort of thing can happen here. So if you just hammer that top box you can make it across there. If you do happen to break some of those boxes earlier it makes it a lot more difficult so try and copy that strat strategy that I used just before. Now same thing here, you've got to be uh, Yako and keep ping ponging him. And just push the boxes to make it upwards. It really is important to turn around and keep paddling him. Because uh, if you try and get too carried away with pushing the boxes, he does catch you and it's really bad. We'll pull the box onto here to keep this bit open. And then we're going to uh, take a right here. You can stop yourself getting crushed there by just leaving the box underneath. Um, that's a pretty nice way to get through this section. Alright, keep an eye on the door down below because that's going to open as we step on this switch. We basically have to step on it and then uh, run down through the door and be as quick as we can to make it through. So if you want to be really safe, let it open all the way and then you'll want to make it through just like that. So we're in the exit now. Uh, next room we have, we want to basically go clockwise through the room, so up to the very top and then across to the right. Hammer this and then we want to hammer this switch here. That pretty much raises these platforms, which leads us through to the exit there. Okay, hammer this one and get yourself shot off with the cannon. And we just got to be very careful of all the flames in this area. So this is another section where we want to um, use the hammer to go up and down, but this is more for collecting power-ups. If we just ride it across, we should be fine. Alright, so now we're at the boss. Uh, these platforms will drop when you stand on them, so make sure you're quick. Uh, watch the electric sparks down this area because they can zap you as you go. Uh, just make sure you're paddling the policeman as you go through and then weave your way up. Just really keep an eye on those sparks because they can throw you off with their patterns sometimes. Moving on, we just zigzag up through this section and then basically we're on a conveyor belt. 
So we want to get close enough to paddle him. And then we get our reward. And that's the space area done. Okay, now we're up to area three. Uh, yeah, this one's based on the westerns, actually. The previous one was like an Indiana Jones kind of thing. We'll see the policeman a few times, but you can just keep paddling him. And you want to ride the horses up uh, to jump on these cacti. Alright, making it through. So there's a little thing on the top left here. We'll hammer that. And then hammer it again, that brings this down, and we can make it across. Now we're going to keep paddling this guy, and we'll make it past him. So now we're in the tavern, and we're going to make it through this section. To try and avoid the barrels as you go, hitting that switch is a good idea. And this one as well. Now this area can be quite complex, especially as you first do it. Um, pretty much what you want to do is get these blocks down so we can make it across the flame area. So we want to bring this one down so that it's on top of the bottom one. And then we'll want to be dragging them across so that we can uh, push it over the gap. You basically want two boxes here so that you can jump over the flames. Um, but if you're prepared to lose some health, you can do it with just the one box. So you can see me like inching the bottom box to the left. That's because I got a ledge to stand on now and push the top box over to the right. And now we can make it across the flames. All right, moving ahead. Same thing here. We'll be making it across the flames. And hammering our way up. And there's our exit. Okay, we can basically just climb this section here. And if we're really, really uh, good with our timing, we can make a jump across here. We can pretty much trick this bird into sending us across. And we'll make this jump. You gotta hammer uh, this thing here. And that'll fall down. And then we can jump across here. So there is another way to do that, where you come in from below and then go to the right, but uh, that way is a lot quicker and easier to do. Okay, now we're up to our boss fight for this section. So the premise is that he's fighting you want to train. Uh, you basically got to keep outrunning him. But first of all, we got to shoot these coin things at him. Um, easiest strategy is just to keep hitting this thing and it'll keep shooting coins and they'll eventually hit him. Uh, but if you get your timing down a bit, you can actually plan the coin hits in advance. I always find in this level that I run out of time, because uh, there is that little timer there and you can see there's not much time left, so uh, keep an eye on that and keep collecting clocks throughout the level as you need them. Okay, so here's the actual train part of the boss fight. So if we hammer this thing, it'll basically shoot a little bit of uh, coal into the thing. Make sure the lid's actually open, so you'll see that lid that the coal's falling into there should be open. If it's closed, the coal will hit the closed lid and bonk you. So what you really want to do with this boss fight is you want to keep the policeman jumping at the cart and you want to speed up just as he's about to jump at you, just like that, because um, then you'll fall off onto the track. And that's the way to sort of speed this fight along. Whereas if you just keep speeding up as much as you can, he'll never try and make that jump and he'll never fall onto the tracks. It's falling onto the tracks that hurts him. So we'll keep speeding up, keep outrunning him, and there we go. So eventually, he'll spit out his little uh, reward for this bit. And there we go, I had exactly zero seconds left, so you can see how tight the timing is for this level. Alright, coming through again, uh, number four is a horror themed level. We have our little intro cutscene as per usual. And then we'll make a start. 
Okay, so we're basically just going to head to the right. There aren't too many tricky things. Uh, you can freeze little Grim Reaper dudes with uh, kisses from Dot. And with these uh, little hairy things here, if you don't jump over them from a block, they'll uh, shoot you backwards. So you got to be really careful of those. Pull this block onto the switch. That'll leave that door open for Star if you want it. Uh, then we can hit that switch there and make our way into the mansion. Okay, so we're just heading to the right, essentially. And we have a little fight here. All you need to do is stun her with a kiss. Yeah, we'll pull this block to the right so we can jump up. And then we've got this little section here. You've got to dodge the dishes that uh, Pinky and Brain suck towards you. So it can be a bit intimidating. Um, but just keep jumping over them and you should be fine. Once we've done that, we move on to our next section. So we do need to pull the block over here to jump over the case. Then we've got our little puzzle. So you actually want to do it wrong the first time. Um, that raises one of the doors. It's that left door there. And then we want to uh, pull this block through. And then we'll go back from behind the block and push it. Alright, now that we've done it wrong, we now want to do it right, which is matching all the shapes together. Okay, and there we go. Now the reason we needed this block here is so that we can uh, get it down there and push this one. And that gets us through to the exit. Okay, now we've got this water section. So you will need this block, we have to push it across the gap. And we want it on this pipe here, because normally when we step on this switch, it's going to start the water pressure out of that pipe and the switch goes down. But because the block's there and it's stopping the water pressure, the switch never goes down, which means the switch can be a platform to get up here. Don't be tempted by that extra life, because if you jump in, you'll hit the water, which actually hurts you. We pull this block or push this block more like it, and that drains the water. Alright, moving on. I'm going to pull this block out. And go to the exit. Okay, so now we've got a boss fight. You basically... Uh, the switches work on diagonals. So the bottom left will hit the top right and so on. And you want to essentially hit her off the platform that she's standing on. So try and keep an eye where she's going. And go to the diagonally opposite switch to wherever she is. Eventually, once you knock her off the platform enough times, uh, it'll you'll win the fight. Okay, now that all four levels are done, we haven't finished the game. There is a secret final level, and it's about the Oscars. So we'll go through this little intro section, and then we'll make a start. Okay, scene five. So just heading to the right here. And using these. Okay, so we got to get Wacko to hit the hammer there. And bring this lift up. Just be careful of the flames. If you need to, you can hit the lift down and then back up again to dodge them. And we basically get out here. So with Pinky and Brain, we need to hammer them up here. And they'll do their little dancey thing and break this generator. That generator was making the electricity field there. So now that electricity field has stopped. We can make it up through there. Policeman's sleeping very calmly. Okay, so we want to do some box stacking. Yep, basically pulling it down to make a stack of two, which lets us pull that one out and make it through. Okay. So these platforms can be really, really tricky. Um, just keep an eye on where I'm jumping. So like at what part of the cycle, because it is a bit counterintuitive when you're supposed to jump. Okay.
Now we can pull this block out to the right and make a jump up there. Now this will blow up, so you need to get out of here very quickly. That should lower a staircase for us. There we go. Okay, now this section is kind of difficult. You have to make it through and it's sort of timed because this explosion is following you. But we'll make it through here. You need to pull this block out. Don't be too tender by that extra life. It'll slow you down quite a bit. And back to Wacko to hit these hammers. And there we go. Now the helicopter is going to shoot out these windows here. So probably the best strategy is to let it shoot out both the top and the bottom portion of the windows, then make your move. If you do get hit by the glass, you will take damage, so just be aware of that. Now we need to hit this uh, hammer switch to make it to the next area. So there we go. Okay, now if you hit these fire hydrants, they will put out the fires on the houses. So that's one way you can get through with a little less damage. Okay. And we're done with this area. All we have to do is ride the car here and we'll make it to the end. And we have our Oscar. Now though we have got the Oscar we wanted, Pinky and Brain aren't happy. They're plotting to steal the Oscar. Well, not to steal the Oscar, but to take over the world as they usually would. Uh, so they're our final boss for this game. Essentially, it will all come down to throwing their bombs back at them, but there's a combination of characters that we have to use to achieve that. It's actually a really clever use of the three characters we have this final boss. So they have their big robot. Uh, you can use Dot to confuse uh, Pinky. And then if you have Pinky confused, the bombs won't explode when they're thrown. So you use Yakko to push the bombs into the boss, and you use Wacko to hammer the bombs. So yep, yeah, it's Confuse, Push, Hammer, Confuse, Push, Hammer. That's the pattern of the boss. So there we go, Confuse, Push, Hammer. Just make sure you run away before um, the bomb explodes. I just got to be very careful. So Confuse, Push, Hammer. Confuse, Push, Hammer. Now eventually the boss will lose its legs, we'll see that happen shortly. Until then, confuse push hammer. There we go. So this is where it gets a bit trickier because the legs obviously are detached there. Um, but it's the same sort of premise as to what you have to do. There we go. So once you got enough hits, the foot will kick the boss. And then we're pretty much done. So they'll be very upset about how they didn't manage to take over the world. And that's the game completed. So I'll pretty much leave it there. I'm hoping you found this useful. Uh, if you liked this, feel free to check out the rest of the content on the channel. Because I cover quite a lot of different games. And if you enjoyed it, a subscription is always appreciated and it helps out the channel. Uh, that's all from me and I'll let the credits play out.